Hello, my name is Alexis. I'll be doing a lecture, a short lecture, on the etymology of some taboo English words. So I have two disclaimers. Number one, I have captions on for this lecture, but unfortunately the captions will not include any of the swear words that I am going to say. So if it seems a little jarring, I apologize, but that is what we're dealing with. Also, number two, dis the second disclaimer, I will be covering the etymology of two slurs, the B word and the C word, the ones that are usually targeted towards women. Um, I feel comfortable saying them out loud, um, and if it makes you uncomfortable or you don't want to watch that or hear it, um, I will mention when you should stop watching in order to avoid these words. It'll be slide seven that they start. This is number one. So, um, with that, let's get started. Fuck. That's my favorite swear word. Um, there's supposed to be many supposed origins of this word, and with which we'll discuss one later, but let's look at the origin first. So it's most likely Germanic. Um, the first usage uh, written down at all was in 1500, where a bastardized Latin and Middle English word in a poem called Flynn Flies, or Fleas, Flies, and Friars in English, um, used the word fucant, and I'll let you read that because my bastardized Latin is pretty bad, but um, it translates to the monks are not in heaven because they fuck the wives of the towns of Eli. And I will show you right here with my little highlighter. It's right here, this fucant. That is the word um, fuck, but except for it's in the year 1500. So, um, the OED attests its first usage in English to 1513. The actual first English usage is fuket. And the first usage in its current form, fuck, appears in 1535, in which um, a satire of the three estates by Sir David Lindsay says, bishops may fuck their fill and be vin merit. Who knows what vin merit means, but here we are. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about fuck. It's kind of fun. Um, there's this supposed old wives tale that fuck stands for fornication under the consent of the king. Um, unfortunately, there's absolutely no merit to this. It's really fun to talk about and think about, but it's not true. Also, as we discussed earlier, although there's very much debate about the word fuck's origin, it does not derive fully from Latin as many people talk about online. There's a very hot debate, but it's just not true. Let's move on to the word shit. All right, so the word shit is derived from skitan, which is an old English word. And it, that in turn is derived from Proto-Germanic skit root. And then the skit root is also derived from the Proto-Indo-European root ske. And that is literally how old shit is. It is so old that it, comes from Proto-Indo-European. So ske root meant to cut or split, most likely connotating separation from the body, which if you think about it makes a lot of sense. And its first usage was in 1335 Middle English, cited by the Oxford English Dictionary, from a manuscript in the MS Harley 913, which is pictured on the right, in which there is a satire on the monk on the lives of the monks of people and Kildare called of men lif that wanteth in Lund. So the last part of the quote above that um, contains the Middle English word for shit. I will circle it. Um, it me it says ye mote there in shite. And I love saying it like this little Scottish accent. Well at least I think it's a Scottish accent in my head. Uh, because it makes it sound very dark and mysterious and angry and it's kind of fun. But let's move on to more origins of the word shit. So, shit has also fallen into this interesting but false claim that it comes from an acronym. Uh, some people thought it meant ship high in transit. Ship meaning like a verb, like ship something. Ship it high in transit. Um, so the myth was first popularized in 1999 on the internet and then became viral for 2002 standards in 2002 and it um, has many identical versions of the myth can be found in blogs 
forums, archaic internet sites, and joke archives that I found from the 2002 calendar year. It was very popular on them. Uh, I found about 14, which is very crazy. Um, so they're almost ex identical. And here is one example from ABC Tales. Some guy named Michael uh, wrote on September 4th, 2002, this little tale. And let me read it to you. Certain types of manure used to be transported, as everything was back then, by ship. In dry form, it weighs a lot less, but, at, but once at sea, if water hit it, the manure not only became heavier, but the process of fermentation began and released methane gas. As the stuff was stored below decks in bundles, you can see what could and sometimes did happen. Methane began to build up below decks, and the first time someone came below at night with a lantern, boom! Several ships were destroyed in this manner before it was discovered what was happening. After that, the bundles of manure were always stamped with this term, S-H-I-T, on them, ship high in transit. In other words, high enough off the lower deck so that any water that came into the hold would not touch this volatile cargo and start the production of methane. Now, I would love this to be true. That would be the most amazing thing. But unfortunately, it's not. Um, and it breaks my little heart, unfortunately. So, let's move on. Dam. Okay. Dam comes from both Latin and French. So, the Latin root is dampnare, which meant to pass judgment against. And the first recorded usage in Middle French was dampner, which meant to sentence. At least by the 12th century, that's what the Middle French meant, dampner. So the first recorded usage in law is from the MS Pepys 2344 saying, he damned him to death. And in 1340, the first recorded usage in theology in the MS Arundel 57 said, he is manslot and him zelu dameth as saith the writing. <laughs> now my middle English is very rusty, so I apologize if that was <laughs> said incorrectly. Um, now this is the spot where I want to give you a second to click off. If you don't want to hear about the Beesler or the Seesler, there are some cool resources attached to the end that you might find interesting anyway, but go ahead and click off if you don't want to hear the B or the Seesler. Okay, moving on. So the word bitch comes from the Old Norse, the Cunha which means female of the dog. It could also have meant fox, wolf, and occasionally beast, female of those things, um, which comes from an unknown origin. Uh, this morphed into the Old English word bick, if I can uh, unfortunately <laughs> say that the wrong way, bick, which means female dog. And at this time, it didn't have any connotation uh, that it had today. It didn't mean like... A annoying or pushy woman as it does today. It doesn't have a negative connotation like it did. Um, and the first recorded English usage takes place in this English Chester play circa 1400 in which a character demands whom callest thou kin scabbed bitch or in English my favorite translation um, who are you calling a whore you miserable bitch. Uh, that's from the Encyclopedia of Swearing. It's an amazing book. Um, I hope you guys get to read it. It's really cool. Um, anyway, that's my favorite best first English usage of a word I've ever heard in my life. Um, yeah, I nothing can top that. Anyway, moving on. Lastly, let's talk about cunt. Now, this is an extremely, extremely taboo word. Uh, next to the N word, it is the most taboo word that we have in English. Um, and there's like a long list of possible etymologies that it has. So it could either have come from, uh, the old Norse word kunta, um, or the old Frisian, middle Dutch, middle low Germanic kunt. Uh, it could have come from pro proto-Germanic kunton. Um, some suggest a link with the Latin cunius, which means wedge, um, Again, even others suggest it comes from Proto-Indo-European, uh, geo for hollow place, and still others also the root gwen for women from Proto-Indo-European. So as we can see, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of possible etymologies that it could have had. 
I want to, I want it to be the proto Indo European if we're making choices, but you know, um, I'm just a student and I'm just making some observations. So this is my favorite part. I, when I came across this in my studies, in my learning of the word cunt, I was absolutely dumbfounded. Um, it is absolutely hilarious to me and I hope you think it's hilarious as well, but astonishingly, oh, this is, oh, let me read this to you. It's an excite, um, from the Encyclopedia of Swearing by Jeffrey Hughes, who is a professor of the history of English from the U of W at Johannesburg, South Africa. And he wrote this book called the Encyclopedia of Swearing. And this is a quote from his book. So let me read it to you. Astonishingly to modern readers, cunt was used with far greater openness in earlier times than in popular idiomatic and even technical currency. It is a starting, startling discovery that its first recorded appearance is in Grope Cunt Lane, an Oxford street name about 1230. Whether this arresting name was a warning or an encouragement is hard to say, but the term was clearly acceptable publicly. And I simply was dumbfounded when I found this out. So I looked into it more, and here on the bottom is a picture of Oxfordshire, which is the Oxford Street name, Grope Cunt Lane. But not only is Grope Cunt Lane the name of this street in Oxfordshire, uh, there's a whole slew of, like, British lanes that were called Grope Cunt Lane um, above the top picture in Shrewsbury, was also called Grope Cunt Lane in, like, <laughs> like the 1500s. Um, of course, these <laughs> these uh, streets were renamed and now have lovely, beautiful, flowery names. But it's just so interesting that its first English appearance was as Grope Cunt Lane. That's so, number one, appalling, and number two, just hilarious. I can't even get over it. Anyway, that has been, <laughs> if we can move on from that, that has been my little mini lecture on the etymology of taboo English words. Um, I also have some additional easily accessible resources for your consideration. Uh, my favorite of which is this Nicholas, Nicholas Cage um, Netflix show. Um, it is the etymology of swear words or the where where swear words came from and I linked a trailer to it um, in this page so I hope you like that and I hope that you enjoyed this let me show you my work side real quick um, yeah anyway I hope you loved learning about the etymology of taboo words in English and yeah have a great day